Hi everyone, my name is Francine Dufour Jones and I'm delighted to be here in collaboration with Graphics. And Graphics has provided me with this wonderful product called Duralar. Now Duralar can accept inks, alcohol inks, lead, colored pencils, it erases easy, and it cuts cleanly. That's what I'm going to use it mostly for today. Have you ever wondered what it's like to cut your own stencils? Can you imagine the freedom? Well, I have and I, I love it. This is my very favorite product to cut my own stencils and you can use them over and over. I'm going to be doing a dragonfly stencil today and I just wanted to show you. This is what the film looks like and as you can see, you can see through it. So I'm going to be cutting out this dragonfly underneath it. And this is the stencil that I'm going to get from it. But before we get into that, let me show you some of the ways that I have used stencils in the past, maybe to give you some ideas. You can use your stencils on for just, you know, plain stencils and blocking things out. You can use them for textures. You can use them on many mediums. I use these with alcohol inks. I use them with uh, acrylics and other mixed medium. So I'm going to show you a quick little slideshow of some of the projects I've used stencils for. See if you can spot where the stencil is in the texture. And then from there we'll get on and we'll make your own stencil. What I'm going to do first is I've printed a image of a dragonfly about the size I want and I have a piece of glass here that's taped on the edge so that I don't cut myself. So I'm going to tape this to the back side of the glass. The reason I'm using glass is because I'm going to be using a stencil cutter, a hot stencil cutter. And if I was use, if I just had paper underneath or a cutting board, it would melt it. So I'm going to do that. I also have a board under here. It's not really necessary, but I find I like it because I can move this around without disturbing uh, the stencil. And then just place the stencil, so I'm not going to use all this paper about where you think you want it. When you cut a stencil, you have to leave some a uh, pretty good margin around the edges, otherwise your stencil might be a little bit too flimsy and tear easy. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hinge on this so I can flip it over and see how my cuts are clean when I start. I think I'll hinge it at the top. And I really am not going to use all this stencil paper at this time, so I'm going to cut off some. And the um, dragonfly, I believe, is around five inches wide. Because I'm going to use this on uh, with alcohol inks and mixed media on maybe a five by seven uh, painting. All right, so I have it hinged so that I can pull this up 
uh, as I'm doing it. And I've got it on this board so I can move it around without disturbing it. This is the hot cutter that I'm using. You could use a X-Acto knife or they have other cutting tools, but if you're going to do something with curves in here, I just find this a lot easier. So I treated myself to this. This is what the package looked like, and I just got it on Amazon, or you can probably get this at um, a hobby shop or your local art supply. So it takes about five minutes for this to warm up. I'm going to test it. And this is a very thin point. You don't need to press real hard, otherwise you're in danger of breaking the tip. I think I'm going to put a little tap on this to be able to lift it. You see the hinge is very helpful. You, it helps me see where I've cut out. There, now I can lift it. So I have a little stand here that I can set this stencil cutter on because this is very, very hot. It's probably good to have a fan on while you're doing this. I don't because I'm recording and we'd hear the, the fan. And remember to make sure you try to leave enough space in between where you're cutting out. Otherwise, it's going to be really flimsy. So even though I'm not following the pattern exactly, I'd rather leave a little space. And you want to make sure that you connect all, all the lines together so there doesn't uh, get hung up here. I'll probably speed this up because it's a slow process, but I think you get you get the gist of it. I really like this Duralar. It is so useful for so many things. I've used it for luminaries too around Christmas or the holidays. I paint on it with alcohol inks and then I put a, a candle, not an electric candle in it. It's really pretty. Now see, this is pretty close. So I'm going to leave a little bit more space than the pattern shows there. So it won't be so flimsy. And sometimes I'll just cut this whole wing off instead of all these little veins, and then I paint them in. You could do that too. Okay. 
It's been a while since I've used my cutter, so it's uh, taken me a little bit of practice to get back into it. So if you're just doing this for the first time, you might do some practice pieces uh, just to get the flow of it. But as you can see how important it is to have the glass here, if I didn't, it would uh, possibly burn the paper below it in my desk. And try to keep it one continuous flow rather than stopping and starting uh, for one shape. we we'll get a smoother edges that way too. That's looking really good. While I have this out, I, I often do in-person classes and sometimes I'll bring stencils for the class. And by far the most sought after stencil is this design. Quite often, if I've got it hot, I might just make one or two more so for my classes so I don't run out. Now that we have our stencil made and all cut out, it is time to use it in making a painting. And the next wonderful project by Graphics is Durabrite White. I love this paper, especially for alcohol inks. It's, I think, one of the, the favorites of most alcohol ink artists because here's the paper. Uh, one, it's nice and thick, but the best thing of all is it can get all the way back to white in very little effort, which is unusual among a lot of the substrates. Durabrite white uh, is non-staining. It's heat tolerant, so you could use a hair dryer with it, but I'd still use caution. It's, as you've seen, very heavyweight. You can paint on both sides. And it's non-absorbent and waterproof. So this is a 9 by 12 pad that I'm using, and I'm going to cut it to size. I'm uh, painting on a 5 by 7 because I have mats for that size. So let's do some playing and painting with Dura Bright White. <music> some real light colors. I could spray this with alcohol or, or drip it on. I'm going to just start with uh, dripping on a little color here and there. This is magenta, um, Senorita Magenta. And this color is Sun Bright Yellow. Now, as you can see, the colors are kind of moving together and they dry super, super fast. In fact, it's much dry now. Now I think I'll just throw a little blue. Not too much because it's a very strong color. All right, so we have our background here and the stencil that we cut out. And now I'm going to kind of arrange it in a uh, pleasant way. Might have it going off or might turn it, let's see, this way. Keep in mind you want to get the most contrast with the colors you're going to be adding. So let's see. 
I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. Just to be safe, I'm going to tape this down. Now I'm going to decide on colors that might be contrasting with that. And I'm going to use acrylics, and I'm going to dab acrylics on here. I think I will try a magenta. And this is a little phthalo or turquoise. This is high flow acrylics, and this is heavy acrylics. Either one will work just fine. You can use a lot of things to dab it. These are inexpensive makeup sponges. They'll work great as dabbers. This is um, Martha Stewart dabbers. These come out, you wash them, and, and you can put them back in. So, And you can also use a brush. I think I'm going to play with this. Test it. 